Hello. Are you ready to go? I don't think I'm ready. We'll do the whole jump chair thing. Yeah. Ethan. <laughs> Today is March twenty eighth, two thousand and twenty one. It is season five, episode thirteen. I'm Eric Murphy, and with me today is Thomas Westbrook. How's it going, buddy? Good. Good. I, I feel old. Well, that's because today's your birthday, and on your birthday, you wanted to come in and, and do this. Um, um, I figured I what, what better way to spend my birthday than to, you know, have some time with, with you as well as uh, hopefully some uh, interesting, crazy calls just to spice it up. Those That'll are my favorites. Really, really good. That'll be really, really good. I'd love that. Um, thank you for coming. I, before we dive into regular announcements, I know you've been on before, but... For those people who are new to the show, who are you? Um, my name is Thomas Westbrook. I have an animated show called Holy Kool-Aid where I'll take complicated topics related to science and lately history and archaeology and I'll break them down in super laser focused ways. So right now I've been going through the history and archaeology of like the Levant and, and which is the, the area of the world known as Israel nowadays, but I'll look at the history of the Jewish people and the, where did the Bible come from? Is any of this true? Is it historical? And then I also examine all kinds of wild claims about the paranormal, about ghosts, about pretty much everything supernatural you can imagine. But my whole point is I want to encourage people to think critically, to use scientific skepticism, and to maybe have some tools in their tool set to figure out whether or not things are true and how we can find that out. I absolutely love watching your show, and um, I've actually gotten to help recently. I, I've been yeah. uh, been picked up on your channel and, and helping you edit videos. So yeah, newest it's, member of the team. So yeah, it's been fun. Yeah. It's been fun. Uh, so we've got a couple of regular announcements. Um, I think there might be a bit of an issue with the mic. Uh, I think I could borrow yours for just a second. All right. So uh, regular announcements. There's going to be an episode of the Nonprofits at three. If you haven't seen the Nonprofits, it is excellent uh you should absolutely check it out uh is another aca show and speaking of the aca talk heathen is a product uh, is a production of the atheist community of austin uh the aca is a 501c3 nonprofit uh, uh committed to the promotion of compassionate atheism and the separation of religion and government if you like what we do and you want to support us we're putting on shows we're putting out educational content we're supporting groups that are doing good work out there consider becoming a patron by going to patreon.com slash talk heathen to me that's patreon.com slash talk heathen to me two-thirds of the way through the episode i thank our top five patrons and uh i've got it up i refresh it so if you want to hear your name read live on the air today go to patreon.com slash talk heathen to me all righty, Thomas, you ready? How's your mic doing? I'm going to fix it in the meantime, but in the, but let's dive into our first call. Let's go with Barry in the UK. Barry, you're live with Eric and Thomas. What would you like to talk about? Hi, Eric. Hi, Thomas. Nice uh, talk to you, and thanks for taking my call. Yeah. So, Great talking to you. What, what do you want to talk about, about today? Yeah, uh, what I'd like to about is basically following on from a call that V and Vice Rhino took last week, which was about how to promote critical thinking and skepticism in schools and uh, how to equip kids for uh, when religious ideas are presented as facts. It is definitely different um, over here. Um, but uh, what specifically did you, maybe I missed the question. Well, so so you're saying you no, want to learn how to effectively promote critical thinking in schools? Is there a particular area? Is it, hey, these, you know, kids aren't getting it in school. What can we do at home? Or is it how can we encourage teachers to uh, teach critical thinking? How can we get it as a part of the curriculum, at like a, a government level top down? Like, like what areas are you are you looking at? Yeah, more more your second point, more the sort of the top down government curriculum led level, I suppose. Um, essentially, what I wanted to, to say is that over here, I uh, I'm a volunteer for Humanist UK, so I've recently nice. trained as a school speaker to go into schools uh, at their invitation to discuss humanism as a worldview. And I was wondering whether something like that is even possible in the US. Uh, I don't yeah. know enough about the education system there, so I was hoping you could kind of let me know whether that's you know even 
possible. So it varies, uh, I think, from a scale of probably to not in your life. Uh, I mean, the, the the U.S. is just so big with so many disparate cultures that are in, that are that are you know sectioned out that um, there are some areas where I think that would be absolutely fine. Um, but we're in the South. Mm. Um, we we have a dear friend who has been getting threatened regularly because um, they brought up the fact that their child's teacher was going on a religious rant. Um, and it, it was absolutely inappropriate. The school backed them up and it got real, real nasty. Um, we have a long way to go over here. Uh, I, I don't think we could get there right now. I think our next reasonable goal is just to be safe and secular before we can start advocating it over here. Well, I think that there's there there are definitely baby steps that can be made because if you're wanting to go from hey, the, this school is teaching that evolution is a lie and that the earth is 6,000 years old and they're teaching straight from the Bible a religious agenda. If you want to go straight from that to actually teaching skepticism and critical thinking and science and evolution and, and everything, that might be difficult. The first thing, you know, in the U.S. is, you know, we've started in the courts and we've had the, this court battle again and again saying, hey, look, here's what... Here's why evolution is backed up by science. Here's why it's, you know, it's not a religion. And here's why teaching the religious perspective is violating the separation of church and state. And it is teaching religion from a tax-funded university, or not university, a tax-funded um, public school, why that's not why that's problematic and why that's not legal. And I, I think that once you have those battles in the courts, you're always going to have, or not always, but you're still going to have some teachers who are violating that and who are doing it and getting away with it because everyone around them isn't calling them out. But I think that there are baby steps that we can take to encourage people to think critically, both inside and outside of the classroom, and to kind of push that into the curriculum to encourage teachers to teach logic and reason and critical thinking, even if it's not necessarily a from a controversial position like i was taught logic and, and i was taught certain aspects of critical thinking even with young earth creationist religious parents and as i got older i was able to use some of those ideas and reflect back in on myself and my beliefs and it helped me to get out of my and, and de-indoctrinate myself yeah but I, in the meantime it's it's taking a lot of that and and it's it's sad but you know systemically i think that we've got a long uphill battle and we have been fighting it heck i've 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 spoke um uh to the texas state board of education when they were trying to whitewash history um a few years back it's it's well let's look at it this way barry you're from the uk right yeah that's right yeah, um, you've got this is this is partially your fault. <laughs> <laughs> you shipped you shipped your your religious fundamentalist nutters out because why would you want to do and 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 then they started and 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 really kind of baked in a lot of those nutty values into uh, uh, what we're fighting today. So you exported them when we that. I don't yeah, know if we can yeah, ever forgive you, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's a strange thing because you know those guys are uh, well, maybe not those guys, more enlightened thinkers. Obviously, came up with the uh, the concept of codifying the separation of church and state, which you know, we don't have over here. It's really bizarre that the UK is technically still a theocracy. You know, we have guys bishops sitting in the House of Lords making laws purely because they hold a position in the church. There's only two countries in the world which do that, and that's Iran. And here, you know, but at the same time, you know, we are a very secular country and most people know that we, you know, we tend to get by all right. Um, going back to what you said, uh, Thomas, about, um, you know, court rulings, basically one of the big things that changed here was in 2015, there was a high court ruling, which basically concluded that teachers have a legal obligation to teach about non-religious worldviews as part of the inclusive religious studies in non-religious uh, state schools. And that teaching has to be objective, critical, and pluralistic. So essentially, schools break the law if they don't teach non-religious counterpoints such as humanism as a, a valid way to approach uh, 
sort of moral issues. So, yeah, maybe you know, maybe the US is, as you say, in, in some areas quite a, a long way off. But you know, maybe those baby steps into that sort of thing are things like uh, you know critical thinking that can be taught in in a variety of ways. You know, I first learned in in history and how to evaluate um, sources and you know first and primary and secondary sources where there's a bias where there's propaganda and you know i used that for years in school um and it wasn't until years later i actually thought you know what that can be applied to other things that can be applied to the religious claims so mm -hmm. it, it can be taught sort of safely without going up against religion um i think that's you know probably a, a good place to start absolutely i i wish that we could include classes in in logic and 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 give people you know a, a stronger understanding of what a good reason looks like and what good reasoning looks like um i'm absolutely on board with you on that um well, i think also in, in addition to that <clears throat> you know you're talking about that you know how do we teach humanism and how do we teach you know the these these ideas and i, I think that most Christians in, you know, Christian public or Christian schools, even in private schools, even that where we don't have legal protection over the separation of church and state, you know, where they can teach straight out of the Bible. I think even in those places, there's not so much resistance or so much of a barrier to teaching conceptually about what other religions believe. So they might talk about, hey, here's a world religions class talking about how you know, the Christian or the, the Muslims will believe that, you know, Muhammad is their prophet and the Hindus will believe in multiple gods and stuff. And they might look at it in the same way that we look at the Greek gods or, you know, the Norse pantheon and stuff. And I, I never really faced as, as a believer, as an evangelical fundamentalist, even there was some objection to like actually reading the holy books because it was seen as kind of demonic, but in terms of objectively studying it, as to like what do they believe i didn't see a whole lot of resistance to that maybe maybe others have but i think that when you teach a kid wor world religions and when you teach them what other people believe and why they believe it and how they got to those beliefs there is kind of a moment that it doesn't happen for everyone but it certainly has happened for me and i've seen it happen to other people where you start to realize like oh my they also believe in miracles they believe that you know there was some eyewitness testimony that saw and wrote down these incredible things and they believe this that and the other and I, I may have found reasons as to why it could have happened like oh it could have been demons or something else but i think when you see the process of how they get there and their epistemology and the holes and flaws with it you start to realize that your religion doesn't really stand up to the same scrutiny that you're putting other religions against yeah absolutely it's but like an outsider's test of faith um barry um i'm i I love that you want to keep pushing for things i i wish that we can get to a point and i hope that we can get to a point where you're up but uh in the meantime we've got a lot of work to do and um we're glad you're watching well thanks very much and i appreciate all that uh that you do you know when i've done this training to uh to go and speak in schools uh, as a humanist, you know, I, I did find the the approach um, was a lot less AXP and it was a lot more talky than, uh, and I've been following you guys for a long time. So, you know, I really appreciate the uh, the help that you provide us in, uh, you know, fighting for the same things here as uh, as you do over there. So, thank you very much. Appreciate it, brother. Take care. Okay. Then, Thanks very much. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm I'm just glad that he was able to find a show that he liked. You know, lots of people are um, like our big sister show and um, other. it's just what your flavor is. And I'm glad that we were able to be that thing that he liked watching. Um, so, the niche. Yeah. yeah. OK, so we've got a, a few callers in here, but we do not have very many religious callers. Look, now's your time. Call in if you if you want to talk to us about what you believe and why. Specifically with Holy Kool Aid here, he's been putting out a whole lot of stuff dissing on uh, the biblical history and accuracy of things in the Bible. Uh, he's done a whole lot of work on debunking psychics and um, showing how that kind of stuff happens. Also, I don't know if dissing would be. I, I don't know. Dissing versus critiquing. Critiquing, yes. Critiquing, yeah. Dissing has that's a really fair. negative connotation, and I like. I no, do, it's negative if, on its own. If I find something that's humorous, then I will one thousand percent, 
you know, give that humor the light of day. But that's fair. My, that's my, fair. my goal is not to make fun of people. No. Um, Unless but... you're Ron Wyatt. <laughs> It's <laughs> amazing. Stay tuned for that. Um, all right. You ready to uh, to talk to a caller? Let's go with Gemma in the UK. Gemma, you're live with Eric and Thomas. Oh. Good evening. Hi. What did you like to talk about today? Um, so I was brought up as a very, in a very religious household and but last week I came out as a trans woman and okay, congratulations. Uh, I'm now, I'm now having so much trouble with my parents and family because they're deeply religious and they're trying the indoctrination um, tactic on me with, um, you're going to hell, you'll never see your family again. Um, and I just kind of now get to the point where I'm not, that's right. I'm not, you know, I'm kind of doubting my religion. But I'm, they're kind of like trying to scare me, but I'm also scared because of, you know, in, um, probably from all the about, you know, going to hell or... Yeah. Mm. That, that makes sense. So, so just just to clarify, I, I it, it says in the notes, but I want to make sure, you're, you're still a believer? I, I am, but I'm now becoming more doubtful because... They're using religious as a trying to use religion as a tool to, you know, saying that you can't be, you know, yeah. a real That's believer can't be trans, can't be trans, a real, I, you know, religious believer, you know. Yeah, I, 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 I would characterize it as using it as a cudgel. Um, you, you know, it, it's, it's. Well, first off, I want to just before we go even any further, I just want to empathize. Um, Gemma, I, I, the fact that you're in this place is really, really crap. I'm so sorry that you're having to deal with that. Um, it, it, it does get better. And the only reason I know that is because I've, I've, I've seen it. And, and as you grow, the fact is you are going to continue to build the best life for you. And the fact that you're taking those steps, you should, you have every right to be proud of. So that 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 in and of itself you know is uh as far as the the rhetoric and 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 the way that they're treating you you know the thing is what if and i and i have to ask myself this what if they're still right but it's just a bigoted group you know, just because the people are could be bad doesn't mean the idea is necessarily wrong. And I, I, I would just caution you to, you know, as you're looking at it and and and, and doubting your faith, um, I know that a lot of things can lead people down that way. The problem of evil, right? Why would God allow this? Why would God, you know, put things out there and 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 have their followers do these kinds of things? And the problem of evil is a really really tough one. You know, why is there baby? Why why is there childhood leukemia? You know, <laughs> what's God's purpose for that? Um, it can be it can be really really difficult to to push through, and 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 to to work on. Um, but I, I, I want you to try and hold a little bit of separation because I want you to believe what you believe for good reasons. And if you're in a place of hurt, I recommend taking the time to work on Gemma, you know, and, and once Gemma is safe, right? Have, have you heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs? No, I haven't. No, it's, it's this, it's this kind of a pyramid and as you go up the pyramid, we, we have our needs as people. And, and you have things like, where, how, how am I going to get food and shelter to, um, do I have support, interaction? Do I have peers? You, you know, I, moving on to um, just all of the steps that it takes for us to get to a place where we can make those, those more um, nuanced decisions. And so, when something lower on that lower on that totem pole is is being severely affected, don't hold yourself to the standard that you're necessarily going to take that step. Because at the top is self actualization. We want we we want you getting there. Just but take care of you too. 
Well, I think, Gemma, it sounds like you've there's oftentimes I'll talk to theists and when things are going great and when things are going well and when they're emotionally involved in their faith, then it can be very difficult to question it or to look behind the curtain and to objectively look at their faith and see if it's true or not. At the same time, a lot of times Christians will have, they'll paint this narrative of you're only becoming an atheist because you were hurt or because you want to live a life of sin or because whatever they reasoning or the way that they paint it, it does a disservice to a lot of atheists who've really, really looked into it. And I think that there is value in having that emotional moment that you're experiencing right now where you realize that, oh my God, this this whole Christianity is a religion of love and it's non-judgmental and it's it's accepting. And you start to see the hypocrisy and you start to see that not all of that's true. And you start to see a lot of the harm that's caused by the religion, you know, especially towards the LGBT community. And you see that and that that pulls down some of the emotional walls, some of the emotional indoctrination and brainwashing that can happen as a kid. You start to, to realize that, hey, maybe it's not exactly the way that I thought it was. Now, I think at that moment, then I, like, I agree with Eric that like you need to be careful that you still you take care of yourself, but that you pursue things and try to learn things for the right reason. Try to figure out if something is true using sound methods, you know, to, to objectively look at it and say, is this true or is this not? Because we don't want to we, we don't want to lead you wrong and, and tell you, oh, yeah, just because they hurt you or because they were abusive or harmful that that's why you should leave it. Like, I don't think that that's a great reason to believe or to not believe in something. And uh, But that doesn't mean that they haven't hurt you. That doesn't mean that they haven't harmed you. And that mm -hmm. doesn't mean that there's not reason to to question and to doubt. I think that there is. Yeah. I, I don't it, know if that helps. In, in fact, I, I think you'd probably back me up on this, Thomas, that it's, it's often a tactic to prey on people when they're in an emotionally vulnerable place. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to do that to you. Yeah. No, I, I see that all the time with, I, I've, I've done series, an entire series on psychics, debunking them and showing how oftentimes they'll prey on people in their most grieving and most vulnerable place. They'll come along and they'll see someone who just lost a loved one and they'll say, oh, well, you can talk to them for just the small price of $500 for half an hour. And they'll rob people of their life savings. They'll make them do all kinds of crazy things. And it's it's really gross. But when you're vulnerable and when you're hurting you're susceptible, and we don't want to. We don't want to do that to you. We don't want to take advantage of you in in a moment when you're hurting and when you're grieving. We don't want to be like, oh yeah, you know, those people were terrible. Screw them. them. Here's a like, we're not here to to prey on you. We want you to be in a good place and to be healing and growing as a human, and also know that like there is support and there is love and there there is a really vibrant LGBT community and and secular community and humanist community that will love you. But we're not here to manipulate you and tell you what to believe as a string for receiving that love, if that makes sense. I think that anyone who tries to do that, run away, like run away fast. <laughs> yeah. When it, when it has those strings attached. Hey, um, I think what happened. No, go ahead, Gemma. I think, what, I think what hurt me the most was when I got a um, text from my, 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 sister and her husband calling me um calling me faggots and stuff like that i think that's the hardest hardest bit of the whole thing yeah holy crap yeah i i i i can i cannot even imagine i that the the hurt that i oh my goodness jim i'm sorry can i can, can, can i give you something that might that might help a little bit though I know you're still a believer. Yes, please. I wish I could give you a hug. Yeah, same here. <laughs> um, but I, so I know you're still a believer, and I know even all the way up until the end, I thought that if a God does exist, that that's a loving God. It that that it's something I held on to, and I don't know if it's something that you hold on to, but the fact is, a loving God doesn't create people to punish them for who they are if that god was there and loving and 
on top of that there's this there's this underlying theme of being broken and a lot of people will live their entire lives perfectly and they'll say well you're still stuck with the uh, the sin that you were born with but the fact is it what it's doing is it's breaking your leg to sell you a crutch Gemma, whatever you do, however you approach this and however you walk away from it, just know that you are not broken. You are not wrong or bad in any way. I, 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 it took me so much longer just to get out of religion because I thought that my, for some reason there was that my antenna to God was broken and, and, and everybody else has got it. And for some reason I just don't. And it's not, that's not how it is. You're not broken and you have every right to live that life and, and, and not be told that you are. Thank you. Yeah. Is it, is, do you know of any UK based charities um, that I can speak to? I think there are tons and I think we have a lot of uh, viewers who are in the live chat sending you tons of love, by the way, and our crew sending you love rings. <laughs> um, if you hop into there, also, if you check out our Facebook or our Discord group, um, I think that they can help with a lot of resources. Also, um, I know that Recovering from Religion Foundation is mainly United States, but if you call them, I I'm telling you, when I, I, I volunteered as a, as a, um, as someone who would work the lines for recovering from religion a few years ago and i had they were they gave us access to one of the most comprehensive list of of secular and atheist organizations groups that that can be there that are local and i would absolutely give them a shot and and see if uh, they can point you in a in a direction as well thank you i'll give them i'll give them a i saw it in the chat i'll give them a call Good. So Good. Good. I, I want to add one more thing, and that's that, like, I I can't relate on the trans note, but I can relate on the parents telling you that you are going to hell and you're broken and you're sinful. And especially after I became an atheist, when I came out, my parents, they started taking anything and everything they could and twisting it to tell me that I was going to go to hell. And one of the things that they did was I had recently gone through a divorce and right up until my divorce, they, you know, they agreed with me that my partner was very abusive and that it wasn't a healthy relationship and that leaving was the right thing to do. But then when they realized that my atheism potentially would damn me to hell in their books i think in their mind they were doing it out of love but it's coming from a place of fear it's coming from a place of brokenness it's not coming from a place of fulfillment and you know purpose-filled life where you're happy and you're complete it's coming from a position of someone who in retrospect i i pity I pity that they're locked into a mindset that tells them that their own child deserves to burn for all eternity after having done nothing wrong or done nothing that deserves any kind of eternal punishment. And it's it's a type of indoctrination that's so heavily ingrained in them. And it's such a powerful tool. It's a tool that causes ideas to propagate and perpetuate for centuries because people have this fear. And it's a crutch that will keep you down and keep you in a belief system and keep you from questioning and keep you from soaring and keep you from really spreading your wings and flying because you can fly and you can be a complete, wonderful, perfect person without this fear of eternal damnation and torment that you don't deserve, that you don't need and is quite frankly, flat out bullshit. I've done a whole video called Realizing That Hell Isn't True, and it's it's on my channel, Holy Kool-Aid, where I walk through the history of where the idea of hell came from and the fact that the early Jews didn't believe in hell at all. And it's not really even a concept in Judaism today, but you see how it's evolved over time. And when you know the traces and you know the origin and you know the history, you start to realize that it's just like any other idea that's made by people and it's used as a control mechanism. And it's not always used deliberately as a control mechanism. People have been controlled by it themselves, and they, they propagate it unknowingly. But 
when you know the history, it starts to defang and declaw the dragon. And it gives you the ability to live not in fear and anxiety and not under this PTSD strain of terror, but you're able to actually go outside and smell the roses and live life and enjoy it without living under a, a shade of fear. Yeah. That's really, that's well put. Hey, Gemma, thank you, thank we you. hope this helps. And also, um, if you haven't heard yeah. of the show Secular Sexuality, I highly suggest you check out secular sexuality it is another aca show it's on thursday evenings so it might be a little late for you but you should check it out um they go over a lot of trans issues and 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 talk about specifically that and being in that space and i think they could probably offer a whole lot more than we could thank you i'll give that i'll give that off give them a call sounds good thank Take you care. thanks for your help Hey, we're sending you hugs. We don't uh, whether you're a believer or not. You're you're going through a tough time, and you don't need to solve all the problems all at once. Just take care of you. You've got this, and you're not alone. <laughs> take care. Thank you. Thank you much for you. Oops. Oh, we accidentally cut the very end of that. Yeah, that was that was heavy. Yeah. <laughs> um. I, I I had someone in the live chat say absolutely butchered Maslow's hierarchy. I yeah I, I did. <laughs> um, trying to trying to do that right off the top of my head. I yeah. can. Oh, it's, it, basically Maslow's hierarchy is saying like in order to live a fully actualized life, like what are your basic needs? And it starts with like you know food and drink, and then shelter, and then like human interaction and love. Like I forget exactly what the layers, which one is on top of which. But it's like if you don't have that basic yeah if if, if you're if you, afraid that you're not going to be able to eat your next meal it's really really hard to have a <laughs> happy fulfilling relationship with someone and then or, and then on top of that becoming your best version of yourself like it, yeah. it, it, they're just it's just needed um also uh, i i want to point out because half of the comments from the last episode i was on uh said eric they're not babushka dolls they're matryoshka dolls is that how you pronounce matryoshka. it one more time matryoshka matryoshka dolls yeah i'm sorry please quit sending me mail <laughs> um okay all right let's move on and let's talk to kathy in pennsylvania kathy you're live with eric and thomas what would you like to talk about today Hi, Eric. How are and Tom? How are you guys doing today? We're doing well. For some reason, the caffeine hasn't kicked in, and I'm trying really hard. But I've got you a got good co-host today, and and he's got, and he's got my Stein. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a top heathen <laughs> glass um, cup. I, yeah. What do you want to talk about now? I'm sorry. Well, I wanted to talk about. I said, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Oh, good. Okay. Well, um, actually, a couple things. Um, Tom, I'm re I like his show, Holy Kool Aid. So I actually wanted to ask him. Like, I'm particularly interested in the rise in um, psychics and astrologers um, since the pandemic began. Ooh, um, and I also wanted to ask question. Tom about some of which I wanted to catch some of his shows on what he was talking about debunking uh psychics and so on and so forth because i think james randy died recently yes he did i'm not i believe he died a couple months ago and i believe he had a, a million dollars waiting for anyone who could uh you know pass the test that he had preferred to offered excuse me offered to um anyone who could prove that they were genuine Mm -hmm. that they really they were actually psychic. And also, I, there was a gentleman who went on with, there's a psychic called James Van Prague, used that term advisedly, and he went on and had him do a reading, and he failed miserably, and he supposedly did the best in his field. So that's what I, <laughs> I was wanting to talk about. Didn't you, didn't you have James Randi on your channel? Yes, I, I did interview James Randi, and as well as... Um... Banachek and others, other um, magicians and people. But it, yeah, no, it's, it's interesting that you say that about Van Prague because Van Prague is, he's abysmal at his readings. Like if, if you just, if you ever catch him live, like he, he fails so much, like it's, it's ridiculous. But when, um, 
I think the clip that you're talking about, I, I used part of that clip in, in one of my videos where it was a, a news reporter asked him on the spot to read him. And he just said, he was like, oh, my energy's not right right now. And, you know, I'm having a hard time with this and stuff. And, and it was the, the same type of excuse that was used by Uri Geller back like 40, 50 years ago when he went, went on live with Johnny Carson, where as soon as they put controls in place to test whether or not he had psychic powers, all of a sudden he was too weak and his energy just wasn't working. And that's what typically happens is they come up with some sort of excuse. But um, real quick, the million dollar like challenge. Bender, right? Yeah, he was the, the guy that claimed he could bend spoons with his mind. And yeah. it's all, all of those yeah, tricks. I was a have child. Been yeah, I remember that. Like all of those trips, tricks have been replicated by magicians who know how to, you know, either weaken the material or bend it when you're not looking or use sleight of hand tricks. Like there's a million and one ways. There's an entire book on it. I believe um, Banachek, it was either Banachek or Randy. I think maybe both of them have, have written. Randy wrote a book called The Magic of Uri Geller. And I think Banachek wrote a book specifically on spoon bending where they go through and they walk through the tricks that he uses. But the the crazy thing is the million dollar challenge that Randy put forth to test people, it wasn't just for psychics, it was for any paranormal claim or any supernatural power that people claim that they had. And they would present ways to test it. And the person would come forth and say, yeah, that looks like a fair test. I can pass it under those circumstances. And then they would have objective referees looking at it. And every single time they would fail. But even though that test has been discontinued, there's talk about potentially bringing it back, but it's that's kind of been in the works with with Banachek for a while but there are additional or additional prizes and challenges by multiple skeptic groups around the world some of them as much as a hundred thousand dollars that have also been waiting to be okay. claimed with no avail hey. right to no avail okay right. so why I mean um we've had late in human history there have been you know uh human there have been pandemics epidemics so on and so forth um why do you think um people turn to uh religion is it just ingrained in human nature to turn to something uh that you think um, is going to offer you something better in the next life I, um, no i i i think i think it's a ready answer built into human hard hard with the the hardware of the human brain I, in, in a I'm way, interest, I'm interested in your opinion. Yeah, C Kathy, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, in a way, I mean, we tend to look for easy answers, and we have a whole bunch of pitfalls in in the way our brains are because we evolved not <laughs> to be at this place. Our the way we are is isn't because our brains are here for us to have consciousness. It's our consciousness is just a part of having a brain. And because of that, there's lots of problems with, with the, where we go and, and how we try to explain things. Um, there's the phenomena of pareidolia, you know, seeing faces in random shapes. You know, every time you look up at the clouds right. and you see a bunny or, or you know, something like that, right? That's your pareidolia yeah. and, and, and people ascribe that. Also, there's a deep uncomfortability we have when we don't know the answer to a thing. And we've created a society that doesn't value saying, I don't know. Instead, Instead, it's pushed. It's better to fake it and and pretend like you know than than admit that you don't. And it's something as a society we got to get through. It's just I, I I don't think like like when I was a Christian, I was told that was called a God shaped hole in my heart. Right? Do we all have a God shaped hole in our heart? No, but I think okay. that if you're sold a bill of goods that's really really nice. Of course, you're going to want to go for it. I want to see the my loved ones who passed away again. Absolutely. Of course, I want to see my brother restored to normal. I have yeah. tell my mother that. that who wouldn't? You'll and, see and, and, and yet, my brother and, restored to normal. Yeah. But here's 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 the heartbreaker, is I I I would put that right in the same category as somebody saying, "Hey, Kathy, I'm going to give you a million dollars on Friday." Just because I said it doesn't mean it's true, and it can make me happy. But that doesn't mean that that I'm I'm actually going to get to experience it, and I think it does. But I have a faith lot. that you will. But it, it can do a lot of damage that. if that's not the case, isn't it? What it, I, I I just just Wait, I, I know you're a Christian, Kathy, but just walk with me on this one. Just imagine for a second if you were wrong. Can can you imagine somebody not repairing a relationship or saying I love you to somebody when they were about to die because they thought that they'd have another chance in heaven? 
No. I can. I absolutely imagine that. And I've talked to people who've done that, who after the fact had to grieve a second time because they, they grieved when they died and then they grieved when they found out they weren't going to really get to see them again. And then there's the regret of not tying those loose ends, of burying yeah. the hatchet, of saying, I love you one last time. Yeah, but Damage. it's so hard to, you know, and we've had this discussion, just how do you not believe? Like, you, how do you come out of a religious, like, for example, how, like, it's like this, it's like, it's the same as believing in. Like, I can't believe in Santa Claus. I can't. Mm -hmm. So, I can't, in the same way, I cannot believe in a deity. How do you well, make yourself not believe in something? I don't think that you can make yourself believe. Like, I don't, I don't think belief is a choice. And I've, I've actually talked about that specifically on this show before, where if, if you tell me that you're going to kill me if I don't believe a particular thing, I can't just, I can lie about it. But I can't fake it. But I do think that we can examine why we believe the things that we do. And we can look at it and see, is there substantial evidence for this? Or am I just emotionally ingrained in it? Because there's some things that I, I understand the emotional appeal. I understand the, the emotional appeal to want to live forever, or to want to have a mansion, or to not want to have pain afterwards, especially if you're going through and you're living in constant chronic pain and, and you're, you know, things around you seem broken and it's frustrating and it feels hopeless. But imagine if if you genuinely want to know if something is true, true truth really shouldn't be contingent on our emotional state. We should be able to, to objectively look at whether or not something is true and then come up with the tools to emotionally handle it and deal with it and, and either, you know, embrace or cope with it. And it's it's only by learning more, by studying more, by learning, you know, the 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 science of the world around us. Does that match up with the the scientific, um, or with with the views of the Bible, the history of the world around us, and and what are archaeologists finding, and does that match up with the biblical stories, or you know, these tests that have been put forth by James Randi and others to see if there's any evidence to these supernatural and paranormal claims. Does that match up with the world that we would expect in a particular religious framework? And you could go one by one down each, you know, across each religion, and you could do that, or you could, you know, go through them, you know, go through a couple that you you know, may have thought were the most plausible, and when they don't stand up to scrutiny, say, well, maybe there's one out there that does, but until it does, I'm going to remain a little bit more agnostic or a little more objective, or I'm going to kind of wait and see, and I'm going to go where the evidence leads and that's that. And I, I don't think it happens overnight. I don't think that you choose to stop believing in something. I think you just wake up one day and realize, hey, I don't really believe that anymore. I, I, I can I add just a little bit, a, a little bit kind of a of, of a caveat there. I, I mean, I agree with you. I just want to kind of add just a little bit more, and I want to ask Kathy, do you think that yeah. there might be some day that you would just wake up and not believe? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Did you know that? Well, I mean, I of course you wouldn't. I'll tell I you. love this show. This is my favorite TV show. Hey, um, nice. This show. I'm yeah, so no, sorry. This I'm show sure there's is... better stuff out there, but <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. glad you found us. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and, Kathy, um, um, listen, I... Well, yeah. well, hold on just no. one last thing, just so you know. Um, it is a common question for people to reach out to us and say, hey, cognitively... I don't buy this, but I still believe. I'm still oh, yeah, a believer. Oh yeah, definitely. And right, that's 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 true. And 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 those people, I think of it as it takes time for your heart to catch up with your head. Hmm. And you hit the hammer right on the nail. Yeah, that's exactly and, right. And over time, You're right, it's not. It may, it may seem sad because it, it feels like losing a friend. You know, I remember praying and more and more I felt like no one was listening. And then the time came where I I, I, I sat and I, I just, I cried. I was like, this is, I'm not really talking to anybody, am I? But the thing is, what we need to do is we need to make sure that you know. Hmm? So you felt like you weren't talking to anybody but yourself at 
and at yeah. the end of the day, right? Yeah, but and, and, but but here's here's the problem. Like here's the problem is you're in this system that has built so much around it. It's not just the God concept. It's the way we treat our families. It's the way we do our politics. It's the way we look at morality. I was told that morality has to come from the Bible. If it doesn't, then then there's no morality. I walked around for a little bit going, how, you know, can we possibly have morals? And, and I had to realize eventually that we do. The question is just why? Why do we have those morals? I, I recommend that. That's a hard keep... question. Yeah. And, and, I, I'd, but... like to see, I'd like to see um, Thomas or you do shows on. I would love it if you would do shows on. I don't know if you have, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, on morality. Because if you were to do a show on biblical morality, th their morality would be would be considered immorality. We don't have biblical morality because it would be immoral to impose biblical beliefs on people, right? Yeah. So, so um, I, I can point you a couple places. Um, Matt has yeah. has talked a lot about uh, you know uh, the morality of slavery in the Bible. Aaron Ra has done a whole lot talking about morality, and I actually did a multi part uh, sit down with a professor of philosophy, Randall Rouser, on my personal channel, uh, Eric D. Murphy, where we sat down and specifically talked about the moral argument for the existence of God. Uh, you might want to check those out. Yeah, I'd love to see that. I would yeah. love to, and I uh, I was going to ask uh, the, Thomas is Thomas right uh, yeah. about is there how do I look up his um like for the psychic part of it debunking the psychics I'd really like to watch catch that so, so um, good if, specific, if you go to my no, channel if you go to Holy Kool Aid yeah. there's one of the ta to the tabs once you click on my channel there's playlists. And in playlists, if you just kind of oh. scroll through them, one of them is called Psychics Exposed. It's either Psychics Exposed or Exposing Psychics. I think it's called Psychics Exposed. And there's just a whole list of them there. And I, I walk through the ins and outs of how cold reading works, how hot reading works, like psychics who've you know been caught in the act failing. I've done interviews with uh, quite a few magicians and you know psychologists and you know palm readers and stuff. And there's there's a lot of meat in there. Do you but name I, any specific psychics that are active today that are openly like like I had meant I don't I don't want to call anybody names on the on the air well but, we, we don't want to perjure ourselves either <laughs> no. um, I, I, I really don't want to call anybody names but um is there any good. specific site like for example they used to say this she's deceased now Sylvia Brown they Whoa. Brought, oh she, just you weren't gonna have a field day on her you're going to have a field day on his on his playlist. Well, let's just say that okay. for legal purposes, I don't outright call anyone right. a liar, a con right. man, or a fraud. But I show right. what okay. they do and I demonstrate it. And I leave not a whole okay. lot to the imagination. And I'll cover Teresa Caputo, the Long Island medium. Uh, That's people that, like yeah. John yeah. Wood. Yeah. Like, I, I go through the whole just, just list wondering. of famous ones. What okay, was his well, name? The, the, listen, the driving guy. Great. It is Thomas John. Holy oh, crap. Okay. He the Thomas John one's great. Yeah. Tom Thomas John is one he has his own TV show and I I did a, a whole documentary style video on an expose that caught him in the act doing a hot reading where he was reading information from people's Facebook pages. And in no uncertain terms he got caught in the act. And so there there's a whole video on him there. <sighs> But if, if you're wanting to find specific psychics, like, and, and yeah. you could look at this, and a lot of people who claim that they have psychic powers, they'll look at those types of videos and they'll be like, well, those are just that, like, sure, there are frauds and there are con artists and there are people who are fake. But this person who I know who gave me a reading, they were a real psychic. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, bring oh, them I in. Know. I know. We have the hypnosis. We, we, I know. We have the hypnosis house where this lady claims to be a psychic, but I don't believe in that stuff. And if people are actually believe in the Bible, you're not supposed to go to psychics. <laughs> hey, so Kathy? I'm not, I'm, that's not me saying it. I'm just no, I'm no, repeating. No. What Kathy, people. what's great and is... I, thank you for talking to me today. Absolutely. Well, and, and you, you know, and just, just so you know... Eric, you I haven't spoken to Eric in a couple months, so... <laughs> well, I miss talking My to you. You're fun. Favorite uh, Kathy? TV show, yeah. I miss talking to Eric. Yeah. So, thank no. you so much. Have a great day. Thomas, well, it was a pleasure talking to you. I'm going to look up your show. Yes.
I, I wanted to say one more thing before you left that Eric asked you if you could ever see a point where you would no longer believe what you believe. And your answer is normal. If you were to ask me that same question 10 years ago, I promise you a thousand percent, I would have given the same answer you gave. Oh, thank you for picking up that thread. Yeah, that was the, the that was what I was going to say is, yeah, mm. that. Um, Kathy, you're a wonderful example. I think it of might have evolved skeptic. gradually. It does very, it's very, very gradually. gradually. It's an evolution but, of that. Okay. It's, it's gradually, but I every once in a while you have an oh my point, moment. Like I had some moments that where I was like, eh, I, I'm kind of maybe an old earth creationist now. I, you know, I believe in evolution or I believe in this, that, and the other. I don't take the Bible completely literally, but I still believe in, you know, this, I believe in God or I believe in the resurrection or whatever. But there were a few moments where I saw some outright hypocrisy or things that I'd been taught one thing and I realized it was the exact opposite where I was just like, I'm done. Like I'm out. Like I'm there there were some moments, some turning moments where the light bulb switched. But yeah. Uh, Kathy, thank you for being a great well, example. The thing is, is a, of, yeah. Yeah. And uh, you, thank you, Eric. I mean, um you're a wonderful wonderful person, a young man, yeah. and if I had a son, I want him to be just like you and you too, Thomas. I have a beautiful daughter instead. So, oh, anyway, well, we're sending have a you great love day. right back. Stay safe. Thank yeah, you, Kathy. Right back at you. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. You too. I I think she's a great example of the fact that people, a lot of people think you can be a skeptic or a Christian. Mm -hmm. She's a Christian. She's a believer. Oh, yeah. And I've talked to atheists who are flat earthers. Like (laughs) it's atheism. Atheists don't have a monopoly on skepticism. And I, I think that especially with there's there's kind of like a foggy line where like not everyone who's a creationist is a you know young earth creationist evolution denying completely non-skeptical buy into everything you know miracle believing christian there are christians who are like oh well i take these bits philosophically and i kind of believe in a first cause you know that may have been you know either a deistic Mm -hmm. or theistic but not like and in every single other area they're skeptical and they, yeah. you know, they follow the scientific method and they apply it to their lives and stuff. I will take that kind of a theist a thousand times out of a thousand over the non-skeptical the, atheist. the atheist who just literally is like going out and like, oh, I've got to align my chakras and go to my psychic and, you know, uh, have this, you know, spiritual energy healing so that, you know, I, I don't fall off the side of the flat earth and it's like so 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 here's here's what actually blows my mind I, i've still never figured this out if somebody says they're balancing their organs balancing their organs yeah yeah like like like, like putting your your pancreas or your liver in balance i, I i've seen it and read it so many times and i'm wondering do, do they mean like the left side weighs as much as the right side i think they're talking about the energy yeah which... i i don't i don't know but but before we yeah. go i've actually got a good idea and since i've got you on the air i can pin you down uh-oh hey you know what we should do huh we should we should try and recreate some of those tricks recreate some of the the psychic tricks yeah oh i i have with a few yeah but i'm like i'm not a magician and so a lot of them like i know how they do certain acts yeah. but especially the ones that require a certain level of skill and like sleight of hand and stuff oh, that's true some of them take a lot of work i kind of want to try though I'm, I'm actually in the process of building a telekinesis device see there we go yes and there's there's like 20 different ways that you can do one trick and the whole purpose of of doing this would be to demonstrate skepticism because you do it one way and people are like, oh no, he's just blowing on it. And then you're like, okay, well, I'll cover my mouth with tape now or I'll, you know, put a box over it so that you can't blow on it. And then you still recreate the trick like 20 different ways. And as you walk through it, the whole point of that is Well, don't then, give them everything. Well, give them something to watch. Them everything. They, they don't know the methods I'm going to use. Fair so, enough. So, Fair enough. you know, it'll, it'll be entertaining. But the whole point of that is to show you that just because you don't know how something is done doesn't mean that it's you know, magic or supernatural nonsense. Fair enough. All right. Ready? We've got Sam in Texas. Sam, you're live with Eric and Thomas. What would you like to talk about? Hi. Well, uh, yeah. How are you doing? I guess you know, the reason why I'm well. calling is because. Oh, what's up? Yeah. I, why, why, why are you calling? Yeah. What's up? Well, um, a couple of things. One is your the guy there, I forgot his name, um, since I don't have the computer in front of me. But okay, he was mentioning that, you know, about evidence proving uh, stories in the Bible are accurate or whatever it may be. So, you see, for, for an atheist, 
Um, you need to see to believe, right? Not that, necessarily. That fair statement. I, I, I think that's a very reductionist. You, 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 you would need to. I think so it's a very, what would I think be it's a very uh, proof to you of, that, of what that the Bible or Christian uh, that 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 the things in the Bible are true. What would be like for God, for instance, what would sure. be proof to you? You would need to see God to believe it. Okay. So right? um, I, I, I can, I can absolutely help there. Um, is Nazareth a place? Bethlehem, Judea, right? Well, Where what, what I'm helping you here. Well, well, hold, no. on, hold on, hold on. Would seeing God help you? Sam. That's a simple question. Sam, that's a second. That's another question. Okay, I'm happy well, to answer the <laughs> second one, but I want to finish answering the first one. Go so, for okay, cool. So, did Judea exist? Absolutely. Was there possibly a King David? Yeah. Actually, evidence shows there may have been. Um, th th there are events that uh, you know, and in places that we can see exist, and I'm. I'm not of the opinion that everything is wrong just because it's in the Bible. Eric, what I'm, Eric, 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 listen, listen. Sam. Please. I'm Sam, not telling you that places, I'm telling you God. Sam, you specifically you asked. Place. I'm telling you to believe in God. Sam, you're you changing the question. To believe, you need to see God to believe God, right? Sam, you're changing the question. Go ahead. The, the question that you asked was... No, you, um, you want to talk about cities the and Bible I want to talk about being God. true. Because you asked about the Bible being true. If you want to change the question, I'm fine with that. But if not, then if we don't make sure we're clear on what we're talking about, we're going to talk past each other. And then people and, get angry. And you're talking... And, no, but, no, Eric, listen, you're telling me cities that we can agree on are true in the Bible. That if we're talking about geography, then the Bible's true. I'm, I'm talking about God here. I'm not talking about cities. Okay, so then don't, let's not point at the Bible, and let's specifically talk about a claim that you want to know if I think it's true. So would you like to point to a claim that you, that you think I should believe is true? Well, the reason why I'm talking about the Bible is because the Bible claims that there's a God. But you the want to point out cities. I'm trying to tell you, for you to believe well, that there's a God, you need to see... God in order to believe it. Is that correct? Sam, I, I just want to butt in here because I, I think the reason you guys might be talking past each other is because you are asking whether or not the God of the Bible is true. And I think that there's two distinctions that can be made because you can argue that whether or not God is true, but then there's a million different types of gods that, that could be. But then in order no, to argue that Eric, the God of the Bible is true, uh, hear me out. If you want to argue that the God of the Bible is true, well, if we disprove the Bible, we haven't disproved the existence of a God or of all gods. We've just shown that the Bible itself isn't a credible source. And so the God of the Bible probably isn't true as defined in the Bible. And so it, which, which route do you want to go down? I'm afraid to agree to anything I got to tell you. Sam. Okay. Well, we wasted a Sam, lot of time right now. Sam, I want you to listen very carefully. We're talking about points. Or we're talking about the Bible. When you start saying you're afraid, you're making it personal. And if you make it personal, you can make it personal on somebody else's show. Okay? Listen, Eric. I'm Don't, just, no, you Sam, want to talk about cities. I, I want to Sam, talk about I want God. you to understand that because that is your one warning. Okay? I don't do vitriolic name calling yeah, hey, crap. Listen. Okay. So so okay, let's let's this is what I'm kind of interested in. Okay. Give do you Eric, want to ask a question? Okay. Give us the clear question and then let us answer it. What is the question you want to ask? Because it sounds like it's not, uh, why don't we believe in the Bible? What one specific thing do you want us to talk about? You get one because we have okay. this call in show. We've got lots of other God. calls. God. God. Okay. You need to see God to believe him. Okay. Do so, you need to see to believe? So God. there are, That's there's, Sam? That's the question, sir. That's okay. the question I'm asking you. Sure. Let's do, let's do let's take a look at the God. God to believe him. Yeah. Do you think that p different denominations of Christianity have different thoughts about God? Are you a Mormon? Are you a Seventh day Adventist? Are okay. you a Catholic? They all have different definitions. So before you get on your high horse, let's make sure we're understanding what we're talking about. Can you define what are some characteristics of that God? 
maybe if I know what characteristics you're talking about, we can look for them together. Eric, can you share with the audience, what did your screener put down by my name, the reason for my call? Caller thinks hosts need to view the Bible in a different light. Right. So that's what I'm bringing you. I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about cities. I'm specifically talking about God, because can we agree that the Bible claims that there is a living God? Can we agree with that? Okay. I can agree with that. If just, just for the sake of argument, sure. I want to see where you're going. Oh, yeah, we, we can agree that the Bible claims that. Sure, why not? Okay. The Bible claims that there is a living God. That's all I'm trying to say here. That's the reason why I brought up the Bible. But right away, you're talking about, and then I mentioned, secondly, is that you need to see to believe. And after I said that, you immediately started going off into well, Jerusalem and, and Sam, Judea and Bethlehem think... and Israel. And I'm like, I'm talking about God here. I'm not scene... talking about a, a continent. <laughs> I think that the so whole scene to, to believe God to believe, is, right? You need to see to believe. It's more complicated okay. than that because it certainly would help to be able to see a God. I think absolutely. If we're able to see a God, I think that that would go a long way. The fact is we can't, but just because you do see a God doesn't mean that it's true because there's a lot of religions. I think you would agree with me. You know, like Muhammad claimed that he had encounters with God, and you probably would agree that that's not the right God. And lots of people have claimed that they've seen gods and deities. Egyptians had their whole pantheon. Norse gods had their gods. Many people claimed that they had divine encounters with deities, but I don't think you believe that those are true. So I don't think that just because you have an experience like that, that that in itself is necessarily sufficient because there's so many reasons why our brains can misfire and why we can think we experience things that may not even be there at all. Does that, uh, that, you know that makes the question a little more complicated for sure, but I think that that's how we have to start looking at it. You know, it, it, this is completely amazing to me that I started the conversation with a simple question of you need to see to believe no that and is an accusation so Sam. We do you even understand how language works sam you need to see to believe is an accusation about us and how we interact with the world you didn't ask us no, you hey, carried okay. with you the assumption me, but i just told Eric, you i just told you sam that let me if help I you saw out that sam, to see to believe. believe sam we're answering you need to listen thomas do you want to say that well, again Sam, what, what I was saying is you're saying we need to see to believe. And I'm saying actually seeing isn't really sufficient. Depending on what the claim see, is. The thing is I was actually going to try to agree with you guys that I need to see to believe because honestly and truthfully, that's the way I live. I, I got to see to believe. That's the only thing that makes me a Christian. That's the only thing that, that makes me uh, a believer in God is because I need to see to believe. And so my reason is, is because you're not going to answer about agreeing on that specific quote. I'm just going to stop, and, Sam. And I answered you didn't like it. Do not mischaracterize that. I must have missed it. What, what was your what was your answer? My answer is do you, do you agree with that quote that yes, you need to see to believe? No, so, I, so, I said like three times, no, seeing is insufficient. Sometimes, most of the time, there's, yeah, there's a lot more. Wow. If I had God stand in front of me, I would believe. You're not listening. Why don't you respond? You asked the question and he answered it. Did you, uh, do you understand that he answered it? That, yes. That, do you that agree that he that answered that it? He, that's not the case, bro. Do you me, agree that he answered uh, it? I, do you agree that yes, he, answered he answered it? it. Yes or yes. no, Sam? Yes, Eric. Yes, Perfect. Eric. Thank you. Yes. Now we can move forward. So the thing, okay, then with that said, then I'll just say for your co-host for the day that he's unsavable because even seeing, he says he wouldn't believe. You see, this is what the Bible tells us. I really don't care about what the Bible tells are getting, us because I don't, think it has an, I don't think it's true. Denying God. Okay. Sam, because would you, would you agree, though, said, that I'm wrong? Would you agree? Or do you think that I'm wrong in saying that 
if you see another can god you, from another religion, that sorry. that's insufficient. Did you hear what he said? I, I, okay. No, what, what I heard. No, him no, no, Sam. Did you hear what Thomas just said right now? Thomas, yes. Did you yes. hear what he said? Thomas, that it wouldn't be sufficient. Like so if you, you need more than to see a god. god appear before you, would you instantly believe that that god is is real? I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I, I, yes, I would. You would. Yeah. So if 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 it's all of a sudden yeah. you you saw some crazy wild outlandish thing, you would just believe whatever you saw. You wouldn't think maybe I'm having a focal point seizure, maybe I'm a paranoid schizophrenic, maybe I, I ate a spoiled piece of meat last night, Thomas. or maybe I'm on drugs. Thomas. Or did I like, answer the question, Eric? Eric, stop him. Tell him. Did I answer the question? You did, and Eric, he's he's, he's, he's did I he's, answer the I, question? I answer the question. Look at Thomas. Here, here's the thing. I'm telling you right now, has a Christian and a full-on child of God, that if a Hindu God appeared before me, I would believe that Hindu God. And that's why I think Hindu that, God. yeah, that's why I think that because the, I need the, to the see using, to believe. That's why I think the tools you're using are crappy. Do you believe in all of the people who say that they were abducted by aliens? I'm not talking about other people. I'm saying you yourself, you, Stop Eric. It. Just, you, Thomas. I don't if care. You, Thomas, I'm, doubting Thomas. If you put your, if, if God appeared to you in the flesh, would you believe We're using him? these other instances to show that you that how Sam, we're using these other instances to show you how unreliable eyewitness testimony is, and including your own eyes. I'm talking about people. Eyes. I'm talking about you. I know. Well, congratulations. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying my eyes too can deceive me. My brain can deceive me. This whole experience can be tampered with. It's not the most reliable tool. Watch watch an episode um, of Brain Games. Now, like in Brain Games, they'll go through and they'll show you a million different ways where there's people who um, have been put in prison I mean, uh, for decades of their life mm -hmm. and who've lost decades of their life only to have DNA evidence exonerate them because they were put in jail because of eyewitness testimony that got it wrong. Okay, listen, Thomas. Uh, all I'm saying is there's no help for you. But I'm going to yeah. go to Eric now for a second. Eric. Hey, if Sam? God appeared to him, to himself in front of you, would you believe Sam? him? Sam? Yes. Yes, sir. I do the pacing for the show, not you. If you want to railroad us, you can create your own show. But this is a dialogue, not the show that, no, no, that no, no, Sam no. is running. So when we hit the brakes, you're going to break. Why? Got it? Okay. Okay, cool. Okay. So we Eric? talked about, I'm going to recap. I want to make sure that you agree we're on the same page. You came in with the accusation and the assertion that we need to see to believe. We disagreed with you. And we, I, 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 I might be just speaking for Thomas, but I don't think that I'm very special as a human. I think I'm just a human like anybody else. And I think my, I think Thomas agrees with that. And because of that, when we bring up, I don't know, apparently there's no hope for me. Well, <laughs> The, well, yeah, which is incredibly I mean, God can appear himself before you, and you would say that your mind is deceiving you. Is that not true? Did you just say that? I, I, I mean, God can I literally does, appear does, in front of you. There are, ways, there are ways to test things and to try to see if something is reliable and true, and we can get into what some of those methods are, but I don't Thomas, think... We don't just have that I time. We just have... Okay, I'm sorry. Just because I see something, I don't think that that means that it's necessarily true. It would help. It would definitely help if I was able to see and engage with the God. It would help even more if everyone else was able to see it too oh, and nice. engage with it and test it and use scientific <laughs> tests on it. Yeah. The, but the, the, the tool that you're using, Sam, is the same tool that people use to justify the fact that they still think Elvis is alive and that people get abducted by aliens and that they see Bigfoot. It's the same reasoning. No. They said they see it. No. Well, Tell well, me how it's different. Amazing. Stop it. Tell me how it's different. Because because what's different is, is that God can appear in your studio right now in a flash of an eye. Well, then why well, no, no, wait, stop. On, wait, let's wait. God, can you like appear on camera? It would, it would, it would, right now, it, it would, it would really help me and everyone watching if we could have God, like, but the thing is, right now, right now, hold, hold on a second, hold on, hold on, hold on, wait, God, are, are you there? <laughs> Oh, 
What? Did you see that? Oh my god! I, I think we're at Billy Believers now. He, Sam, he, here's the thing. Sam, yeah, no. the claim. The claim is exactly here's the same. Here's the thing, Eric. The, no, no, the the claim right. is the you same. You don't believe the claim is the same. They said they believe. They said they believe it because they saw it. And if seeing is believing for you, then if you're going to be consistent, do you believe in Bigfoot? What are you saying? He hasn't seen This Bigfoot. is what I'm saying, Eric. No, Eric, Eric, answer me yes or no. Do you believe in Bigfoot? Entire audience. Do you believe no, in I Bigfoot? Don't. I do not. Okay, no. do you believe the people who say that they've been abducted by aliens? Do you believe their stories? No, I don't. Do you think that they're lying or do you think that they actually saw something and just are mistaken because i I'm, i already told you you missed it i need well, to, well, to can you repeat it then because i i must have not caught it i've been saying this since for like the last i said it about a dozen times you see i've already said i need to see to believe so well, if yeah, i saw no, somebody I'm, get I'm it, abducted by aliens about, guess what yeah. i'm gonna do i'm gonna believe Sam, I'm talking specifically about people who've had these or claim that they've had these experiences. Do you think that they're com all completely lying and they're con artists, or do you think that they think that they believe it? Like, do you think that they're genuine? The people who claim they that they saw something and were abducted by aliens, do you think that they're just mistaken, but they saw something, or that they're completely lying and they didn't see anything? Like, which of those two? No, I'm telling you that I like. What, which of those two do you think believe. that they experience? Well, I could care less because I, it, well, none no, of them matter because Just I need will, to see will it you to believe humor it. Me, Sam, will you humor me for this? Which two do you think that is the case? Do you think that they experience something and they're mistaken or that they're all liars? They're all liars, for sure. They're all liars. So liars. everyone who thinks that they saw Bigfoot, thinks that Absolutely. they saw Loch Ness, thinks that they were abducted by aliens, thinks that they saw Elvis, <laughs> every single one of them is a dishonest charlatan liar. Is that my right? Uh, yeah, it's your yeah, right. right. I just, yeah, it's your right, right to be an right asshole. That's fine. Them. No, I I don't even think it's an asshole thing okay. to be wrong. Like, I just think that you're wrong. Like, like like I'm like like I'm being stoned. Pick up, set, set down the rocks, please. No, hold on a <laughs> second. Yes, all if lies. you're going to point at an entire group of people and say what you are firmly claiming about yourself and your beliefs is you are lying to my face and you know you're lying, that right there is shitty. When people call into this show. I don't That's assume that you're lying to me. I assume that you are bringing your best and that you believe the things you're saying because we want to practice integrity and assume that you're an honest interlocutor who really believes that so that we can meet you where you are and have that conversation. The fact you're not willing to do that with other people is evidenced by the fact that when you came on the show, you made an accusation about us. And when we try to tell you that's not the case, all you did was talk over us. I think you need to practice. Oh, I'm sorry. Some, some, are, are you uh, Christian? Well, if we were Christian, would you treat us it? better? I, 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 I didn't know that you guys were Christian because I thought you guys didn't believe in Christianity and it was all fairy tales like I've been listening to for the last month. You guys talking what about. Was, you know, how, oh, wait, wait, wait. What do you need a Christian have to do? Oh, hallelujah. Have I, have right? I ever I said mean, it was all fairy tales? On, on, on this whole thing. But I, I, I know you're so I, I, I think you got in a really, like, really like bad you. argument okay. on Facebook and you're taking your rage out on us. Talk to us. One, Don't. One second. No. I, I really want him to. Uh, he's, he's shortening his news and I want to see where he goes with this. You, you said, are we Christian? What does that have? Are you saying that non Christians can't be honest and only Christians can be honest? No, because of the fact that you're a non-Christian. In other words, I'm a non-believer in in these uh, extraterrestrials and these Bigfoots. I'm not an, a, an agnostic. Are you an agnostic or are you no, a talk no, Are you an that's, atheist? No, that's, that's a, that's I'm that's kind of getting mixed signals here. That, that's a, a false dichotomy. There are plenty of Christians. Atheist. Sam, that's a false dichotomy. There are plenty of Christians who believe in Bigfoot. There are plenty of Christians who believe in Loch Ness and who believe in aliens. Well, I'm only one man. I'm only one man. I mean, I'm what not speaking for everybody. You guys speak for everybody. I don't. I, I called to talk to you and uh, and Thomas, Eric and Thomas. But you're yeah. over here, you know. This guy's yeah. a troll. I, 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 I don't think so because he reminds me of my uncle. I've honestly had these conversations. Um, so so I, I, I think he's we got, a, got a, back, a very, very clear oh, thought in his head about it. And instead yeah. of... 
sure. honestly engaging. I, I think he's he's arguing against it's called a straw man. When you build up this idea of a person and attack that idea instead of the person. We're we're giving you examples. We're trying to provide teachable moments. And instead you're interrupting and saying you're not talking about you specifically. We're giving you all of these different responses to respond to the numerous things, which by the way is called moving the goalposts. Right. So okay, I, I think I, I think we're done with our time with you. And I think that this you one... please need to practice charitable listening. Okay. Let's just make one Char charity. Did, did you hear what I said? That the frustrating, you? The frustrating yes, thing here, I Sam, did hear. the frustrating thing here from, for me at least is that you started this conversation with an assumption of what we believed without asking us what we believed. You assumed that, Oh, you have to, if you see it, you'll believe it. And otherwise, you know, there's no hope for you. And I think when we told you that that wasn't the case, and when we didn't fit your little box, when we didn't fit this narrative that you created, then you you got upset. Tried to stop and, us in. And then, then you just said that, oh, everyone who, you know, claims that they, you know, see or believe a particular thing, they're all just liars. And I think that that is where like you've got some work to do man if you want to if you really want to connect with people and if you really want to engage with them and learn from them because there are you can learn something from anyone but especially from people who disagree with you if you want to learn and have productive conversations you have to listen and not just assume that you know what they believe before you start the conversation and, and if if, if your okay. assumption is that they're a liar don't start the conversation because you're not ready to have it Listen, listen, guys. Okay, let's just, listening? let's just make this perfectly clear listening? for your for your audience. Yeah, no, I, I, no, no, I, I, you I, don't get this, this audience unless I say you do. Audience. With Sam, no, with you don't get this audience unless I say you do. So listen, charitable listening is is it, it means okay? That when Eric, someone just... says something, okay, you're done. You don't get this fucking audience. Bye. You can fucking listen to the playback. Charitable listening. If someone says something and it could be taken the wrong way, right? What you want to do is assume that they meant the best possible version of that, that you can interpret that you can interpret that in the best way. Let them let you down, but don't assume that they're dishonest. Don't assume that they're liars. And for fuck's sake, don't try and fit them into a box because you can attack the box better. We're, uh, we deserve better than that. We try to to make sure we do that by giving that same gracious, we, we, by giving that same opportunity to our callers. He's not ready to have the conversation. You ready for the next call? Actually, what have we got. Actually, before we do that, it's time to thank our patrons. We are past the mark where we normally do. Yeah. Yeah. So. Talk Ethan is a product of the atheist community of Austin. If you like what we do, you want to see these conversations. One of the great things is you can't, you don't, you, people don't get to have that conversation normally. And so at least you get to see it played out. And the fact is, if somebody gets to that point, they're, they're not worth your time. They're just not. But if you want to support the atheist community of Austin, you can send them Dogecoin. <laughs> <laughs> or go to patreon.com slash talk to me uh, our top five patrons this week are eric tweet dingleberry jackson desert heathen bethany p and marry me v <laughs> I, <laughs> Well, somebody's a bit of a fan. <laughs> I, I I don't know what to think about that. Somebody asked if I created that account, and I'm just like, that would be a very roundabout way to do that. Um, I mean, cheers, <laughs> and thank you. Um, and, of course, I'm not going to leave out Balaam's donkey. Um, and to everybody else who is a patron, you rock. We so appreciate your support, and it, it's all the way down to the $1 level. Everything helps. It is going to a nonprofit organization, and if you don't want to go to Patreon, there is a donate link right above the live chat right now, um, and it 100% goes to the ACA. Uh, the YouTube doesn't take a cut, so yeah. that helps. It looks like coming up on their tail, we got Paul Lee. So yeah, you guys right. can donate all the way to the top and get your name right off. 
That said, is it like the most donations per month or like the most of all time? So I no 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 that wouldn't be fair. Or the what, highest pledged tier. What I look up is the pledge amount, and a lot of people don't pledge necessarily at a tier level, but they mm. get something they're comfortable with, and yeah. so I, I look up the pledge amount. If somebody okay. like wanted to donate and do a big donation in one week. We're going to read their name that week, and then they'll probably not be up and have the red name yeah. read next week. But it's not like, oh, man, this person's been a, a lifetime patron for 30 years, and there's no way that you're ever going to out-pledge them. <laughs> if that's the case, I think we need to put their name on a brick Just and have, have that plaque. at the ACA. Like... Yeah. <laughs> Should we get to the next caller, or do we have a few more announcements? Uh, well, um, you know, before we get to the next caller, I do want to say uh, that our crew has been freaking amazing. They've been sending us notes. Um, uh, apparently, when you were talking about Yuri Geller, mm -hmm. um, so Geller actually sued Pokemon oh, because of because of um, Alakazam having the spoons and what? Kadabra. Yeah. <laughs> Like it's ridiculous, but I but take it he lost that lawsuit. We 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 get some amazing <laughs> facts from them. Um, is there any way we can move to the crew cam? We love you guys. Geller's dangerous because he's super litigious. He sues people left and right. So yeah. I'm sorry if us talking about it makes him sue this show. Oh, we've got lawyers now. <laughs> All right. We love you guys. Thank you so much for, for being there and working to make sure that this show's happening. And also thank you to the mods who are in the live chat, kicking butt, taking names and making sure that this is an okay place for people to interact and not toxic as all hell. So thank you for that. Who sues Pokemon? I know. <laughs> like I know. That, that's right up there with Metallica suing all of the fans who downloaded their music illegally. Did, did you ever hear about that? No. They slapped people during Napster. They slapped people with lawsuits oh, for downloading their music, like massive lawsuits. Like it's you downloaded our music illegally. That means they're a fan. And they yeah. were like we're just gonna sue you suing directly. the hell out of their own Not fans. just like the DMCA doing a takedown. But no, like, yeah. no. It, it was absolutely nuts. I never forgave them <laughs> <laughs> to this day. <laughs> All right. So I <laughs> just because of the name, uh, Th this person is Kale Chip in Kentucky. <laughs> hey. Kale Chip, I, I want you to know that um, my, my my roommate here uh, and co-host is a vegetarian. Uh, so you need to be, be a little careful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's a problem. I mean, I'm a vegetarian too. So. Oh, yeah. I'm a vegetarian, but I'm not religious about it. Aha! Uh -huh. Wait, wait. Do I have a rim shot? Hold on. Hold on. No, I don't. Uh, wait. The... Uh, dude, I have actually had those sound effects. And you've just been waiting to use them? This entire time. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, fine, 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 fine. If we're going to have fun, uh, Kale Trip, can you give me one second? I just, I want to play my favorite. I'm addicted yeah, okay. to masturbation. That got pulled out of context. <laughs> And it gets used, and I, I, it is the funniest thing. Okay, sorry, Kale Chip. <laughs> Thank you for being patient. What did you want to talk about today? Uh, all right. Um, so a couple years ago, I had a friend pass away um, shortly after, like a month after his 21st birthday. Um, it was like a freak, like work-related incident. And, um, I actually, like, I hadn't talked to him in a few years before it happened. Um, but uh, I'm not like, I usually don't do this, but I did compartmentalize, um, and like avoid mourning about him until recently when it just like came to a head, I suppose. Um, but that's because his, his, uh, the death anniversary is coming up this Friday and so I'm going to go to the cemetery for the first time. Um, and I know that I'm going to be surrounded by a bunch of extremely religious people. Um, and I'm an ex-Christian, so, you know, that would make me uncomfortable normally. Yeah. But also at the, at the funeral, um, un <laughs> unfortunately, they made it into an altar call which was absolutely horrifying. Kale Chip, I'm um, right there with because you. Because I was, yeah, I, I, was, I, I was already, you know, going through an existential crisis about, you know, I 
could die at any moment. And then he's like, well, the important thing is that your friend was a Christian. And so that means you're going to see him in the future. So everyone here needs to repent and all that nonsense. And, oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. So oh, it was oh, bad. I, I, like, like, like we can dish. Kale, you have no idea. Like when my grandma passed away. I think it was got an idea. <laughs> when, well, I think Kale does have an idea. They, they said um, that uh, she's in heaven and she's watching us right now. And if you're not saved, she's super sad. Like they actually took her memory hostage. And was like, if you ever want to see her again, you need to repent. Right. That's yeah. Christ. It was very similar. It was very mm -hmm. similar to that. And it's like, as far as I know, he wasn't even there. Oh, excuse me. He wasn't even that religious by the time he passed, but he has some close friends that basically believe they receive prophetic word from the Christian God you know, and so I'm kind of afraid of them sprinkling all that all over, like, me finally getting to, like, actually mourn the death of this, of this brilliant, you know, amazing person. And, like, it's just, I'm terrified. <laughs> I'm Can terrified. I offer a little catharsis here since we're dishing? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So my, my grandma's funeral was about two years ago. And I, or just two or three years ago. And I... Well, I wasn't in Texas at the time, so I guess three years ago. I drove down, and I'm sitting there through the service, and my dad asked me to film it. So I've got to stand, like, front and center, you know, filming the service. And he proceeds to give, like, this hour-long sermon talking about how it's so wonderful that my grandma, even though she's no longer alive, that she's moved on to heaven and that we'll see her again and how incredibly hopeful that makes him and stuff and insinuating that it's incredibly hopeless without it. And it was just, it, the, the whole thing just felt like this. I, I don't think that it was meant deliberately to preach at me, but I was like the only atheist in the crowd or I was one of two atheists in the crowd. And basically the whole time I'm just kind of like kind of squirming uncomfortably, not because I think that there's hell or not because I'm, you know, uncomfortable by this or not because I'm, you know, it's like, obviously I'm sad that I lost my grandma, but it just felt inappropriate. It felt like the wrong time to give a sermon. And I still got up and I still gave a story and talked about something, you know, that I remembered that from, you know, my grandma's life. But I didn't do it from a standpoint of, well, you know, it's a good thing she lived her life to the fullest because this is the only life we've got. And, you know, there's nothing that, nothing happens when you die. Like, it's not the time or the place. So it's like, even though they were being shitty about it, even though, you know, they didn't realize that they were, it still was an opportunity to go above and beyond and be the bigger person. And I think that you have that opportunity coming up with, you said that you're going to the grave of, of your friend. And you know, you can still share wonderful, wonderful memories about this great person that make you laugh and cry and celebrate that you got to have that time with them and, and say, you know, this, this person was fantastic. They were great. Like I cherish every single memory and I'm so glad that I got to have those memories because life is short, but this person was wonderful. And here's the things I loved about them. And I, I think that you can do that in a context that is not religious that's completely secular without being, you know, in your face about it or shoving it down their throats. Yeah. Um, I would say gird your loins. Um, you, you probably, you probably know it's hap It's going to happen. And if that's the case, kale chip, can I, can I say Casey? I can't say kale chip without <laughs> laughing. I know, I know it's a, but Casey. Um, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Casey. You have every right to establish boundaries and to say, here's what I'm comfortable with and here's what I'm not comfortable with. And if they choose not to accept or follow those boundaries, you owe them nothing. Because if they are not willing to respect it, you can, you can make other friends who will. They don't deserve you. And um, that's just the long and short of it you know, establish those boundaries. You have every right to say, Hey, I'm here to mourn and grieve my way. I don't want you to proselytize to me. And if you try to, I'm going to need to separate from you enough to, so that I'm not getting that from you. 
you get to decide the relationship you want to have with me. And if you're deciding that you're proselytizing, proselytization is more important than your friendship with me, then that's your, that's your decision to make. Put the ball in their court. Yeah. You, you don't have to sit there and fuck take it like that. That's not, that's not okay. You have rights, you have boundaries, you have autonomy, you have your body and you, you damn well have the right to curate the people in your life. And if they're shitty, you don't need to change them. Let them be shitty on their own. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that I've been pretty good at that in general. Um, but yes. like, I'm I'm less afraid of someone directly attacking, you know, how I'm mourning or or whatever. But like, um, I'm I'm just more afraid of someone going off on a tangent about it. So like, not not really directly at me, and then I would feel excluded in you know in sharing those experiences with people if that makes sense <laughs> absolutely you know you know what's funny is if you just say it like that a lot of times they rein it in um in in my experience of of that i've 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 said hey um i really want to share these things with you guys too but i'm feeling really excluded here um if that's something you want to do like it, it, i guess the question is is how much do you need to be there to listen to them do it Like, you, okay, you. I, I I guess I would just have a hard time balancing um like being like openly listening to them maybe maybe not maybe I'm just overthinking it I'm a pretty good listener you know but like and, and you don't need to Yeah I wouldn't know how to respond to them Do you, do you and, feel like most of yeah, them right. Do you feel like most of them love and respect you? Um I don't know. I, it's really, I have like a terribly low self-esteem. So like, mm -hmm. I just assume that most people don't like me unless I have a good reason to think otherwise. But these but are, these know. are family, family members, right? Oh, no, 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 no. These That's are like not... mutual friends. Oh, okay. then, yeah. They're all around my age. Friend. I, I, I was I was going to say if if it was family or like a family funeral, you know, sometimes just sitting down and asking people, you know, personally, you know, can we have a Yeah, I mean if it was family, like, I would have like a much Oh, sorry. I was just going to say if it was family, I would have a much easier time with it cuz like I have no <laughs> problem setting boundaries with like you, yeah. know, you know what I mean. If family's a different thing. <laughs> so so Kale Trip, I'm I'm interested in what happens if uh when the event comes and goes if you are up for sharing it i'd be happy to have you call back in and, and tell us what happened yeah yeah i expect it to be really interesting um i do have someone bringing me there that um is atheist-ish and so he kind of <laughs> gets it you know and mm -hmm. and like i don't I mean, if there's if there's a point where I feel like I would have to defend myself, he would probably do that. But um, it's I don't really know. Nice I, I guess like just having one person as backup. Yeah, and you don't need to defend yourself to anybody. You that that is not the time or place. <laughs> yeah. And if they if they feel like it is the time or place, that's I see. I I I, I feel like it's a Southern California thing if I say that's their pedo. But in the live chat, if you understand what that means, let me know. That's their that's their pedal. That's not yours. You don't have to deal with that. Uh, All right, Kale Chip, yeah. we've got one more call. I, I expect but... it. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, that's okay. I, I just want to make say, sure. Like other other mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> other than like um, the the things I'm concerned about, I do feel like it's going to be a great time because we're all musicians. And so, like, even with with uh, religious music, I feel like I can just connect with it in a, in a secular way. And I used to not be able to do that. So, I don't know. Maybe that can be a point of, of like, of synergy. <laughs> yeah. Just just know you don't owe them anything. And if they make you feel like they you, that something is required, it's not. But we want to make sure we have time to get to the last person. Kale Chip, be strong. At the very least, I would recommend that yeah. if, if it turns out to be a very difficult experience, seek people to talk to. 
either recovering from religion, um, they've got a call in line, or even if you just go and you find like a, you know, join a community group here through the um, Atheist Community of Austin and talk with people on Facebook, just share, you know, it can be incredibly cathartic and helpful and therapeutic. Also, if you haven't heard of Shelly Siegel, right. you need to listen to Shelly Siegel. God, it helps. Are you kidding? I've just started listening to her like crazy, like a month ago. Good, and, like, good. I know that she wrote this song for AXP and whatnot, but like, oh my hey. God, I'm obsessed. It's like Lucy oh, Dacus and Steve That's our big sister you know I mean? show. <laughs> that's our big sister show. We love it. And also Shelly's amazing. Uh, yeah, uh, Shelly. And then when you want to move into Tim Minchin territory, that's fun too. But <laughs> we, we, we got to go take the next call. It was good talking to you. Yeah. Thank take you so care. much. I'm going to try and call back next week. Good. All right. I know we, I, we want to make sure that we have time to talk to Sean. Sean. Sean, I am so sorry you've been on hold for so long. You've been on hold for over an hour. Sean, what do you want to talk about today? Hey, for you guys, for, for you guys, it's a pleasure to wait. Oh, <laughs> my low self-esteem has no idea how to handle that. <laughs> <laughs> what did you want to talk about I, today? Want, I did i did want i i, I want i had a quick uh two quick philosophical questions for you guys but i did want to say uh eric um i've uh, discovered you about a year ago and your whole uh take where you're waiting for somebody to listen you accuse of you accuse people of waiting for waiting for their turn to talk as opposed to having a conversation that yeah. really helped me in uh, talking to people, and especially when I applied it to myself. Often in conversations, I will say, am I just waiting for the person to talk? And I will rehabilitate my argument. So I wanted to thank you for that. You're the first person to ever uh, express that. I appreciate that. You know, last week, actually, um, I, I had several points and, and as they were talking, I'm kind of, you know, mulling it over. And um, by the time they finished talking, I had completely lost it because I wanted to make sure that I was listening to what they were saying. And um, <laughs> it, 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 instead of feeling embarrassed, I actually patted myself on the back. It felt good knowing that I would rather make sure I'm actively listening to the person responding to them than waiting for the zinger, you know. So cheers. Mm -hmm, but, exactly. Uh, we don't have too yeah, much time, um, but I want to make sure that we have uh, enough time to talk to you about your question. What do you want to talk about? Oh, great. Uh, real super quick, um, uh, if I'm not sure, I'm having trouble wrapping myself around. I know that you and Matt and other people who know way more about philosophy than I do um, do not think that libertarian free will is a thing. And I'm Neither not really, I'm having trouble wrapping my mind around even what libertarian free will is. And then uh, my second quick question is: well, can, can we address um, one at a time? I am an I am, oh, or else oh, we, yes, might, we might forget what the first. We might forget what the first one is before we good. get to the second. That's a good point. <laughs> it, it, we there you go. In, if we were to give it in a nutshell, do you want to shoot through what you think of libertarian free will? Yeah. So when I think of libertarian free will, I think of free will in the absence of um, that where, where, where you can actually, you actually have the ability to make a choice that's not already predetermined or predictated by outside factors. So right now I am maybe feeling hungry or I'm feeling, you know, sad or cranky or whatever. And there may be a million things that have led up to that point that have caused me to feel that way. And so the way that I react to you may be determined by my current state, by the things that you say, by outside factors. It might be that there's bright light in my face, and so I might be irritable from that. There's there's so many things that can determine that in addition to my upbringing, my social past, all of the things that I've read, what my mama taught me as to how to you know engage with other people. And so all of those factors are outside external factors or genetic factors I had no control over that dictated my body and who I am and, and how I am chemically. And so if you take all of that into account, if you were to start the universe exactly the same way that it started, you know, the first time and everything panned out the same way leading up to this point, would I be able to make a choice differently than I just did? Would I be able to choose differently than, or is it just, it's always going to be like that because every single thing that I choose has been dictated by all of the influences around me. Or are we meat robots? Yeah, and then, then the <laughs> if 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 you're arguing that free will exists, 
then you you could say if it's libertarian if it's truly libertarian free will then a lot of times people will argue that there's mind body dualism that you have your body and then there's an external mind and that this mind is somehow making all of the decisions independent of outside um, influences or at least in spite of outside influences it can still choose freely one way or another and the the problem with that is even if the mind is purely spiritual and it's not it has no substance in this in the natural world the question is uh, how how is it free like what makes it free is it does it have any influences if if it doesn't then how is it interacting with this world does it have memories because memories can influence things and it can influence behavior and if it's not if if it's pure randomness sometimes people will appeal to the quantum world and they'll say oh see not everything is is perfectly determinate because you know there's there's a certain amount of quantum randomness and it's like one i'm not sure that it's truly random at a macro level i'm not sure that that's the case but two just because it's random, how does that make it free? So just because I roll a dice and it, it or, you know, I roll some dice and it, it comes out a particular way that I didn't have any control over, I didn't have any control over it. If it's random, you don't have control. If you don't have control, is it free? Is it free will if it's just random? So those are kind of the some of the problems okay. with. And I, yeah. I just where I would go is is just to underscore the whole. I I, I don't think you can have that idea of libertarian free will without also needing to include um, the idea of a soul or some acting agent that is separate from the body, that mind body dualism. And um, if you look up, if you look into it, it's a really, really, really fun thing to kind of learn about. Um, the idea, it, it was thought at one time that the pineal gland in the brain was like the driver's seat for the soul to be able to, to, to drive us around. Um, and, and it's often referred to as, you know, looking for the ghost in the machine. Right. And if our bodies are that machine, are we being piloted by a ghost? And um, the, the example that Thomas gave was great memories, because the fact is your memories are in your brain. You damage your brain, you're going to lose the memories. So I don't think <laughs> you have a soul that. Right. And how many things can we also add on to there? So uh, just because of that libertarian free will, yeah. I don't think is a thing. I, and well, uh, and, and also in, in addition to that, our emotions also dictate our behavior. And there's been people who have had parts of the brain damaged that mm -hmm. has affected their emotional outlook on life. And that's radically affected the choices that they make. Yep. And uh, I just when you see it in the wild, what you're uh, often going to see is this appeal to, well, that sounds scary, so it can't be true. If we don't have free will, then we're just meat robots. So what? Mm -hmm. That's the exact same well, reasoning as saying, yeah. oh, that's scary. You know what? The Holocaust must never have happened because if it did, that would be terrible. Yeah. Well, and the, the, it's, it, can it, still it doesn't have, make any sense. You can also still have will. You can have desires and wishes and wants that are perfectly healthy and reasonable for humans to have. And like, and I have will. I will for certain things to happen. But is it truly libertarian? And I think that that's where we draw the distinction in saying that like, it, it doesn't mean that you don't have desires and that you don't will for things to happen and make choices accordingly. It just means that you may not have quite as much say and quite as much freedom in that as you thought. And it's not a purely atheist Christian divide. There are Christians who believe in fatalism and predestination and, you know, determinism. And there there are Christ yeah. or atheists who think that you have complete libertarian free will. Okay. So um, I know that we are only have a few minutes left, and I want to make sure we get to your second question. Uh, Sean, are you driving right now? Uh, yes, I am, actually. If you get the opportunity to pull over and take a soft speakerphone, it, that would drastically increase the quality of the call. Because it, it can be a little fuzzy a for the people listening. So as long as you can do it safely, that'd be nice. While you're doing that, I have a question about I, your. Second I'm on. Question. I am on a. I'm on. I'm on a very a rural rural road, so that was easy. I'm pulled over now. Is that better? That is way better. Awesome. If we're yeah. Your your second question. Perfect. It's not about whether or not it's ethically okay to sue Pokemon, is it? Because the answer is no. Don't sue Pokemon. <laughs> no, it's it's not. I have much better things to do than. The Sue Pokemon. <laughs> whoa, whoa! Don't let Lars Ulrich. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Harry Geller. Geller, hear that? Okay. <laughs> what, what was your second question? Um, I was just gonna. I was gonna say super quick that uh, the whole pineal gland thing isn't that uh, the plot of From Beyond? Uh, so. <laughs> It might. I don't know if I've seen that movie, but <laughs> do I, I do know do that I... it was it was legitimately proposed uh, at one point. 
I think it was Descartes that said it was the pineal think, gland. Was it Descartes? I think so. And uh, correct us in the chat if if I'm wrong. Yeah, I I I'm I would love that. Um, was that your second question? I, I, yeah, I thought I, I thought I thought I might need to talk to Jeffrey Combs. Anyway, my second question is um, as far as philosophy, uh, when I how I skeptically view things um, is I pretty much want to see something if. If you say Bigfoot is out there, I want to see scat. I want to see a body. I want to see something. If you say you, there's UFOs, I want a crash ship. I want something. So as we go into philosophy, um, when we get into a, a high level of philosophy, which you and Matt and guys are really good at, I have a tendency to kind of blur out and tune out. And I have trouble wrapping my mind around it. It kind of sounds like navel gazing. This isn't meant to be an insult. I apologize. Oh, I call it navel gazing all the time. Don't worry. It is. We we are we are semi pro navel gazers. <laughs> and I, and I, 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 uh, I kind of, I kind of get this thing where we're just talking like, you know, what color is, how do I know the color red to you is not the color red to me. And I just want to be like, check the crayon box. It's right there. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so, am, am I, my question is, am I, when I hear people like William Lane Craig or somebody like this, I kind of tune out. And my question is, am I doing their arguments a disservice? or myself a disservice by kind of just tuning out because it sounds like navel gazing to me and quite frankly, sometimes annoys me. So, anyway, so that's my question. No worries. You're going to get two different answers from each of us. As a philosophy <laughs> okay. geek, you know I'm going to be for it. I, I, I am for it. And, <laughs> and th the reason why is because I believe that philosophy is the the web that brings all of those other things together right so if we think about mathematics the word and is a plus sign right when you are actually listing out things in philosophy mathematics pulls philosophical concepts and and that is applied philosophy it just becomes more obscure more abstract and we do use math um and so as we're kind of going through those concepts, a lot of people will say, well, it has to be the case that God exists for X, Y, and Z. And for me, what I like is I love learning how those are structured because somebody can make the most compelling argument and then you write it down and you look at it and you go, well, that cannot possibly be true for that reason because it is not struct like it's, it's fun. It's fun in a really niche way. Um, but I, I I wouldn't disregard it, and if it's something you want to get into, definitely get into it. But don't think that you know you're being put down if that's not your bag, because it, it, it's not a lot of people's. <laughs> so my take on philosophy: on the one hand, philosophy is an incredibly broad topic. So when you hear the word science, science literally is natural philosophy. It's an offshoot of philosophy. And, you know, the same with, you know, epistemology. It's it's a subset of philosophy. How do we know if something is true? And I think that that's incredibly important in order to use as the basis of the scientific method of testing things and, and seeing, you know, what's a proper way of knowing if something is real or not. At the same time, where I would kind of push back against this a little bit is that I, I I agree. I, I want to see something. I want to test it. I want actual physical evidence. I'm not convinced by apologetic mind games and word games because they 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 can be so slimy and they can equivocate and swap definitions in and out and pull all these different fallacies out that you might not catch if you're not quick witted and and really. Um, used to thinking in this particular way and you don't have training in logic it's really really easy to fall prey to a lot of this stuff and i've seen people fall prey to it okay but hold on a second so hold on a second <laughs> i have had one philosophy 101 <laughs> class that is the extent of my formal training the rest is passion and being a poly uh, a a a but you also you also a, 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 have a, a, you also who... have a mind for it though, and not everyone does. And I I learned this the hard way. And I I had a a logic class, and I was I was sitting in you know my logic class, and like I had taken logic when I was a kid, and so a lot of the stuff wasn't new to me. But it was also like my brain works that particular way. Like I I like to think of things you know in terms of puzzles and lay them out and think of it mathematically, but not everyone does. And so 
I got to the end of the, the logic class and a lot of the stuff there that came easy for me, and I'm not saying I'm like smart because there's a lot of classes I wasn't as good at, but I would get to the end of the logic class and realize that there were classes that I, or tests that I aced and got the bonus questions. And there were other people sitting next to me that put in just as much work that got, you know, D's and F's. And so it's like, not everyone thinks that same way. Okay. Not everybody thinks that way. I agree. But I, I also don't think you necessarily need a formal training. If you're passionate about it and you like it, you can teach yourself. And no, I'm not, a I'm, lot not, of that I'm is... not saying, I'm not saying okay. you need a formal, formal then, training. Then we're on the same page. What I'm getting at is that I agree with you that philosophy can be incredibly frustrating. And especially when you're watching someone like William Lane Craig or someone that that's jumping through and laying out all of these syllogisms and being like, and therefore God, and therefore the Bible, and therefore this, and jumping to these wild conclusions that I think are premature and I think are often based off of poor reasoning or logical fallacies or assumptions or equivocations. And William Lane Craig's not the worst of them. William Lane Craig actually is pretty decent at keeping his logical structure at least all right. But I want to know... Is there actual tangible evidence? And that's why I do my whole Nothing Fails Like Bible History series. I want to know what the archaeology shows and does it line up with what we see in the Bible. I want to know what does the scientific evidence show and is it in line with an old earth or a young earth? You know, is this something that the, the Adam and Eve story, is there any basis in reality based off of genetics, based off of actually looking at the evidence in the data? And I think when you realize that the evidence isn't there, then you can jump through all the philosophical mind games and syllogisms that you want. It still doesn't change the actual tangible facts. Okay. Okay. So, okay. That's where we're coming at it. From this show sides. has a lot of people who watch because they like that. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> but you can do both. You can do both. Like, well, well, okay. 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 Hold on a second. Hold on just a second. Hold on. Here's the, here's, here's the part that I would advocate for. Okay. So there are so many things that people try and get away with. And when you, when you, when you practice it and you have fun with it, for me, I want to call all of my friends and tell them that I have, have, have used the exact same logic that was being used to prove that God is necessary to show that God, that that God is not even possible, that that God necessarily can't <laughs> exist. And I'm waiting for someone to call up so I can give that to them. I'm, dying for it. There are so many of those things that I think when people throw out a whole bunch of jargon, number one, I think they're a bad communicator. And if you have a strong, if you have a good understanding of the subject, you should be able to break it down and teach it different ways so that people can follow and they can grow along with you. If you're trying to mask it in, in a lot of jargon, instead of even trying to break it down for other people to learn, what a lot of people are doing is saying, I'm the smart, I has the smart, and you should listen to me because I said something you don't understand. And I think that that is a barrier to entry that really crappy people put out. And that's what we're trying to break down here. Duh. Okay. <laughs> I value you. You value me. Let's just. I, I, no, I, and I, I want to say, like, I, I do see value in that. And I, I do see value in philosophy and understanding reasoning and understanding the logic behind it. And if you can show where the flaws are and if you can break the arguments down and, and show why something is, is wrong, absolutely more power to you. I'm just going to be like, all right, that's great. You, you know, showed that you think God exists, but obviously, you know, there's clear evidence that the Exodus never happened. So what are you going to do now? <laughs> like, where do you where do you go with it? Like I, so working with him, I found out. The, Jew, the, the Jewish people most likely came out of Canaan, that they were Canaanites. They didn't go into the land of Canaan. They were Canaanites. Or what? they they may have been partially <laughs> seeded from some neighboring tribes slightly, but largely from Canaanite yeah. culture, Canaanite origins and religion. So I I don't know. This this is our jams. This is why we love doing it. And uh, we're happy that everybody <laughs> can bring their passion and we can do this together. I think the two approaches are someone says, look at the trees. And you're like, well, that's a logical fallacy because of X, Y, Z. And I'm like, yes, let's look at the trees. We have trees that are tens of thousands of years older, <laughs> like entire forests that are way older than the Bible says that the earth is. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> we, two approaches. Ha, one no, right, no, one no. All right, fine. You don't get all of that, okay? 
Happy birthday, Thomas. <laughs> All right, Sean, uh, we have the the producer in our ears. We've got to end the show. Uh, but I hope that you, this has been worth waiting for. And thank you so much for calling. It was it, it was absolutely worth waiting for. And if either of you guys are ever up in Ohio, dinner's on me. Oh, thank you. Sounds like a plan. I think that I'm actually, for next year, uh, I'm scheduling a debate in Ohio at Ohio State. Nice. Uh, so when I announce that, oh. um, I hope to see you there. Hey, I'll take you out for the best sushi in the country, in my opinion. You're on. Take care, buddy. See, when you announce All right. it. As- Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, so here's the deal, everybody. This is his birthday. How old are you turning? 31. How are you feeling? Not as bad as my 30th. That was rough. Oh, there's existential crisis there. Um, <laughs> I think 40 is going to be rough. So 50. So as uh, look at that, you're on the lower 30 and you're getting oh. love rings. Uh, Thomas, mm. as your friend, as your roommate, um, and as somebody who supports what you do, happy birthday and on air. I love you, man. And oh. my life is better with you in it. And I'm, I want to celebrate that. I want to celebrate you. And I think I'm not the only one. We're going to celebrate you. And uh, we're going to push each other forward. And it's going to be good. I'm not sure if I should cry or if I should just be like, <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you. I, I, I really appreciate it. Speaking and, of, there are a lot of people that we truly value behind the scenes who are making this work. And I want to make sure that we get them up because you keep those love rings up because our crew deserve love rings. Our crew and all of the work that they do we love you guys. Thank you so much. It is Plunker it is the teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> it is the teamwork and and the dedication to this that is keeping this going. We wouldn't be able to do it without you. Um, so I normally throw the love rings up, but I think that them being up is just fine. That said, do you know the outro? Yeah, for those of you who believe. Well, hold on. Uh, we added because of COVID. If you, if you believe or not, if you're an essential worker, um, thank you. Thank you for putting yourself at risk, and thank you for 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 helping keep this this country going and 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 the world going while we're getting vaccines out there. We're close. We're so close to the end, and you're doing your part. We're going to do our part by being safe. For those of you who don't believe, it didn't work for you. For those of you who don't believe, this is your community. We don't hate you. I hope not. Wait, don't... wait, no, for those of you who don't believe. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm so distracted because every time I look down, there's this button. I'm addicted does... to <laughs> masturbation. <laughs> okay, it, it fine. No. laughing in the middle of a really serious conversation. You don't, you don't get to... <laughs> Do you know Becky? Okay, fine. Um, so <laughs> for those of you who don't believe, this is your community. We're glad you made it. And whether you're fully out, whether you're questioning, we hope you find that this is a place and that we're building a place that we can have fun, engage, and find our own voices and add them to this growing movement and this growing community that you don't need religion to be the one who gives you uh, purpose or gives you meaning or gives you friendship, that we're going out there, we're doing it ourselves, and we're showing you can do it without that religion. But for those of you who do believe, we don't, we don't hate you. you. We, we just, just think, think you're wrong. wrong. See you next week. I'm addicted. To-